Let's go ahead and take a little example 9 from section 4.4. In this particular problem, we want to solve the differential equation y double prime minus 6y prime plus 9y is equal to 6x squared plus 2 minus 12e to the, to the 3x. So we look at it, we realize, okay, this is another situation where it's a differential equation with it's linear. We have constant coefficients, so we can solve them using our, our methods we've discussed in 4.3 and 4.4. 4. The first step is we want to find the complementary solution. So let's go ahead and find uh, yc. To do that, we solve the homogeneous differential equation, y double prime minus 6y prime plus 9y equals to 0. The auxiliary equation is m squared minus 6m plus 9 equals to 0. This factors as m minus 3, m minus 3 equals to 0. And if we set each factor equal to 0, we get one real repeated root, namely the value m equals to 3. Thus, from 4.3, we know that the solution y sub c is going to be c1 times e to the 3x plus c2 x e to the 3x. So that's the complementary part. The next step is we now want to find our particular solution. And to do that, we're going to use the guideline discussed in 4.4. So if we look at the right-hand side of this equation, our function g of x, if we break it apart into kind of like two pieces, what we see is we have what looks to be a, a polynomial of degree 2 because we have that 6x squared uh, plus 2, which is a constant. So we would assume that y sub p could have a portion of it that's going to look like a quadratic, ax squared plus bx plus c. And then the other piece that's here is a constant times e to the 3x. So okay, I'll save d for later. We want that to be our differential operator. So it also seems reasonable that maybe we're going to have an e to the 3x as well. But we run into a little bit of a trouble because if you compare this term here to what we have in, in yc, those terms are shared. There's something, there's a constant times e to the 3x in yc. There's also a constant, we believe, in yp. So that won't work. So we can't use e times e to the 3x. Furthermore, the next thing would be to multiply it by the the smallest power of x to the n, for which this thing would not appear in yc. But we already have a constant. We already have x times it. So we're going to need to assume it's going to be the form e x squared e to the 3x. So again, we've seen this a few times now. This may be the second or third time we've seen it. This is what we have to do whenever a portion of your proposed initial y sub p is also shared or common uh, with the complementary solution y sub c. We now want to determine the coefficients a, b, c, and e. So we're going to start taking derivatives. y prime p, uh, p is going to be equal to 2ax plus b plus, for this term, you're going to need to use the uh, product rule. We're going to get a 2ex e to the 3x plus 3 e x squared e to the 3x and we also need the second derivative so y p double prime that's going to be equal to 2a derivative of 2a x is 2a derivative of the constant b that would be 0 we now can use the the product rule on this thing we think of it as 2ex, which is a uh, polynomial, times e to the 3x. Derivative of 2ex would be 2e. Leave the e to the 3x alone. And then plus, leave the 2ex to alone. The derivative of e to the 3x would be e to the 3x times 3. So we're going to get 6e to the x, e to the 3x 
plus, again, it's going to be a product rule for this term. Thinking of it as 3e to the x squared times, excuse me, 3e to the x squared times e to the 3x. The derivative of x squared is 2x, so it's going to be a 6e to the x, e to the 3x, plus, now leave this term alone. The derivative of e to the 3x is e to the 3x times 3, so we're going to get a 9ex squared e to the 3x. And then the next step we can do here is it might be a little bit helpful to try to clean up our y double prime of p. We have a, a 2a term. We have a plus 2e e to the 3x. And now these two things are like terms, so we can combine those. That's going to give us a 12ex e to the 3x. And then we have a plus 9ex squared e to the 3x. Let's go ahead and plug this into the differential equation. And I'm going to try to save a little bit of time with algebra. I'm not going to um, show every single step here. But we have y double prime to start. y double prime, we just wrote that down. That was 2a plus 2e to the 3x plus 12ex e to the 3x plus 9e x squared e to the 3x. And when I copy it down, I'm already going to distribute the negative 6 into y prime. Here's our y prime of um, p right here. Distributing the negative 6 in, that's going to give us a negative 12ax minus 6b minus 12e to the x e to the 3x minus 18 e to the x squared e to the 3x and I need to multiply y by 9 so that's going to be plus 9ax squared plus 9bx plus 9c plus 9 e to the x squared, e to the 3x, and this whole thing should be equal to 6x squared plus 2 minus 12e to the 3x. Okay. So now on the left-hand side, we want to combine our like terms. Let's um, start off by writing the polynomial part. So on the right hand side we have a 6x squared there's no x term and then we have a plus 2 if I look through this entire expression here where is our x squared term at well the x squared term the only one we have is this one right here so we have a 9a x squared Let's now look for our linear term. The only linear term, actually, excuse me, I take that back, there's two linear terms. Um, the linear terms will be found right here. There's a negative 12ax, and we also have a positive 9bx. So I'm going to write it as plus negative 12a plus 9b. And I'm factoring out the x because I want to equate coefficients in a minute. So that's our x term. The constant term should be only one of them. Maybe actually I take that back. It should be two of them. Uh, we have a 9c right here. You can see it. There's a 9c right there. And we also have a 2a up front. So we have a plus... 2a. Oh, I almost missed one. 
2a to the minus 6b plus 9c. That's our, our constant term. And now the next thing we're going to look for is we're going to have a bunch of terms that would look like um, maybe e to the 3x. Where is our e to the 3x terms? Well, we have 2 here. Let's go ahead and highlight them so they stand out. Here's an e to the 3x term. Nope, nope, that doesn't count. That's not it either. Here's another one. Oh, that's, excuse me, that's an x e to the x term. Looks like we have just the one. Give me one second. I want to make sure I'm not missing anything. I don't see any other of them, so I'm just going to go ahead and copy that down. So we have a plus plus 2e e to the 3x. Now let's look for our um, x e to the 3x terms. Where are our x e to the 3x terms? Well, there's one here. That's not, that's an x squared one, that doesn't count. We have a, a minus 12 e x e to the 3x. And so that takes care of all of those. Notice those two cancel. The positive 12 e x e to the 3x and the negative 12 e x e to the 3x cancel. And then the last thing we would have would be our x squared e to the 3x terms. We have positive nine of them here. Let me highlight it again go for maybe orange. We have a positive 9e e, x squared e to the 3x. We have a negative 18e. E, and then we also have a positive 9e. E. So those will also cancel out. And so what we have is that this thing is going to be equal to 6x squared plus 0x plus 2 minus 12e e to the 3x. And now we're ready to kind of go ahead and equate coefficients. So let me come up here to make our system of equations. The coefficients of the x terms have to be equal. Therefore, 9a must be equal to 6. Negative 12a plus 9b must be equal to 0. Our constant coefficient has to be equal to 2. So 2a minus 6b plus 9c has to be equal to 0. And then lastly, 2e would be equal to negative 12. This gives us a system of 1, 2, 3, 4 equations in four unknown variables, A, B, C, and E. And now we're going to go ahead and solve this system to determine the values of A, B, C, and E. So from the first one automatically, you just simply divide both sides by um, 9, and we would get A equals 6 over 9. 6 over 9 would reduce to 2 thirds. So A is going to be equal to 2 thirds. Now that we know A, we can plug that into the second equation to get B. Negative 12 times 2 thirds plus 9b equal to 0. 
neg negative 12 times 2 thirds, that's going to be negative 8 plus 9b equals 0. You can add 8 to both sides and then divide by 9, and that will tell us that b equals 8 ninths. Now that we know a and b, we can plug both of those together into the third equation to solve for c. 2 times a, that's 2 times 2 thirds, minus 6 times b, that's 6 times 8 ninths, plus 9 times c, This should be equal to, to zero. That is four thirds minus, we'll do a little bit of reducing here, two thirds. That's gonna be 16 thirds plus nine C equal to zero. That gives us what, negative um, 12 thirds plus nine C equal to zero. That is negative four plus 9c equals 0. Add 4, divide by 9. We get that c is going to be equal to 4 ninths. And now lastly, we can go ahead and solve for e. Just simply divide both sides by uh, 2, and we would get that e equals to negative 6. So we've gone ahead, we've now been able to go ahead and find all of our um, coefficients. Let me just check, I think, uh, hold on one second here. Let me make sure I didn't make any silly mistakes. That's four thirds. That's what, 16 uh, over three. That looks good. Negative 12 thirds. Okay, we look good here. So let's go ahead and now put it all together. What is our particular solution? So we have that y, p, the particular solution is a, that's 2 thirds x squared, plus b, x, that's 8 ninths x, plus c, which is 4 ninths, plus e, that's negative 6, x squared, e to the 3x. So that would be our particular solution. And now we're going to go ahead and write down the general solution. So the general solution is yc plus yp, just the complementary plus the particular. The complementary solution was c1 e to the 3x plus c2x e to the 3x plus 2 thirds x squared plus 8 ninths x plus 4 ninths minus 6x squared e to the 3x. And so that would be our solution to this particular differential equation. Let's go ahead and do another one. Let's take a look at example 10. We're asked to solve y triple prime, so this is the first one in this section where we have a third derivative, plus y double prime equals e to the x cosine x. And we know that we're allowed to, to solve these based upon what we learned because we're still dealing with on that left hand side it's still a linear differential equation with constant coefficients so we begin by step one let's find the complementary solution to do so we need to solve the associated homogeneous differential equation y triple prime plus y double prime equal to zero the auxiliary equation for this would be m to the third plus m squared equals to zero we can solve this by factoring. We get m squared times
times m plus 1 equal to 0. Set each factor equal to 0 individually. And we get m equals, um, typically I wouldn't write this, but if you take a square root, you get plus or minus 0. But the important thing is just to note that we're going to get 0 as a repeated root. It's actually a, a, a root of order 2. And then the other one is going to be m equals to negative 1. So our complementary solution this time is going to be C1. And I'll write it a little bit weird at first. But I mean, we should know what's going to happen here. But I'll write 0 times x. Because it's a repeated root, we're going to have C2. To be linearly independent, we need an x, e to the 0x. And then let's say C3, e now to the, to the negative x. Because anything to the 0 power is 1, the e part doesn't appear in the first two pieces. We just get a constant plus what's going to be some constant times x plus c3 e to the negative x. So that would be our complementary solution for this one. Step two, we now want to go ahead and find the particular solution. Let's find y sub p. So we look at the left hand side. Our function g of x is an exponential times the cosine of x. So a good suggestion for y sub p, we would propose that it maybe it's going to look like this. We would think, okay, maybe it's going to be a times e to the x cosine of x. But then we would also need to include a b e to the x sine of x term. So this is what we would propose for y sub p. Just a quick glance. Again, make sure that there's no duplication of terms between your proposed y sub p and y sub c. In this case, there's not. So we're now ready to go ahead and try to work to determine those coefficients a and b. We need uh, the third derivative and the second derivative. So let's kind of go ahead and work through those. y prime, I'm going to be really quickly with this, um, but we need to use some, a bunch of product rules here. We're going to get a e to the x cosine of x minus a e to the x sine of x and then we're going to have a plus b e to the x sine of x plus b e to the x cosine of x and now what I'm going to do before I go ahead and take any more derivatives let's combine the like terms because it'll save us from having a ton of writing here the two cosine terms I guess we can even think of them as uh, e to the x cosine terms. We have an a plus b. That's our e to the x cosine of x. And then for a plus, we have a negative a plus b. That's the e to the x sine of x. Let's take the second derivative, y prime y of p double prime. Then we need to use the product rule on each of these two pieces. For the first one, it's going to be a plus b e to the x times the cosine of x. And now when I do the derivative of cosine, I'm going to end up getting a negative sign here. Um, instead of writing it out in front, I'm going to write it as plus, and I'm going to immediately distribute that negative sign into these coefficients. So that would be a negative a minus b e to the x sine x plus negative a plus b e to the x sine x plus a plus b e to the x cosine x. And just as we did before, we want to kind of go ahead and clean this up. Our cosine our e to the x cosine terms are these here. So if I do a plus b plus another a plus b, that's going to give us 2a plus 2b e to the x cosine x. And now let's kind of go ahead and look at the... Um, coefficients for the e to the x sine terms. We have a negative 
a minus b and we have a negative a plus b if we combine those we're going to get a negative 2a notice that the negative b and the positive b cancel e to the x sine of x now we're going to go ahead and take the third derivative y sub p triple prime is going to be equal to okay, when I do this first part I'm going to get a 2a plus 2b so the product rule e to the x leave the cosine of x alone when I do the derivative of the next piece derivative of cosine is negative sine I'm going to choose to put that negative into that parenthesis so that it goes with just the coefficient e to the x cosine x now we need to do the derivative using the um, product rule. 2a e to the x sine x minus 2a e to the x cosine x. And again, we want to go ahead and combine our coefficients here. We have a negative 2a x e to the cosine x, so that will combine with this coefficient. The negative 2a and the positive 2a cancel. And actually, this will make it a little bit easier than that. So, um, I believe I have a typo. Hold on one second here. Yeah, my, my apologies. This here, I said it, but I didn't write it. This here, derivative of cosine is, uh, negative sign. The negative I already put in there, but I forgot to change that over to sign. That looks much better. So the 2a and the negative 2a will cancel. And what we're going to be left with is a 2b e to the x cosine of x. And now if we combine our e to the x sine of x terms, like we have here, negative 2a and negative 2a We'll make a negative 4a minus 2b e to the x sine of x term. So that's our third derivative. So let's kind of go ahead and, and plug everything in. For this differential equation, we only need to substitute in y triple prime and y double prime. So it's y triple prime, that was 2b e to the x cosine of x plus negative 4a minus 2b e to the x sine of x plus y double prime, y double prime was 2a plus 2b e to the x cosine of x minus 2a e to the x sine of x and this whole thing is supposed to be equal to e to the x cosine of x. Let's combine our like terms on the left hand side. So for our e to the x cosine x terms we have one here and we have one here so if we combine those coefficients, that's going to give us a 2a plus 4b e to the x cosine x. And now if we combine the coefficients for our e to the x sine x terms, that's these terms here. Those coefficients are going to produce a plus. We're going to have a negative 6a minus 2b e to the x sine of x and this is equal to e to the x cosine x and if I wanted to we can put it with a zero coefficient it doesn't show up on the right hand side but you can think of it as zero e to the x sine x and now we're going to equate coefficients so our linear system is going to be the following 
the e to the x cosine of x coefficients have to be the same. That means that 2a plus 4b will be equal to 1. And the coefficients of the e to the x sine x terms will have to be the same, meaning that negative 6a minus 2b will be equal to, to 0. We can now go ahead and solve this system. The uh, elimination method works particularly nice. We can simply multiply the second row, or that second equation, by positive 2. And that will get the uh, b terms to have equal but opposite sign. So equal value but opposite sign. So this will produce the system 2a plus 4b equals to 1. We would get negative 12a minus 4b equals 0 times 2 is still going to be 0. And now we can go ahead and add those two equations together. We would get negative 10a, the b's cancel, equals to 1. So a would be equal to negative 1 tenth. And now that we found a, we can plug it into any one of the above ones. I'll plug it into the first one. 2 times a, which is negative 1 tenth plus 4 times b equals to 1. 2 times negative 1 tenth would be negative 1 fifth, plus 4b equals to 1. We add 1 fifth to both sides. We get that 4b equals to 6 fifths, and then either divide or multiply both sides by 1 fourth. We would find that b equals to um, three tenths. Goes in two, goes in three. So b is going to be three over over ten. Is that correct? Uh, hold on one second. Let me just make sure I don't make any mistakes here. So two a two times negative one tenth. That's negative one fifth. Yep. Plus four b. Adding, we get six fifths. Okay, everything looks uh, good. So now that we're here, we can go ahead and write out our particular solution. I erased the the form of it. You can't see it on the the whiteboard right now, but if you uh, look back through the video, we we already found earlier that we wrote y to p. We said it was of the form a x cosine x plus bx sine x. Therefore, y sub p is equal to negative one-tenth x cosine x plus three-tenths x sine x. And now we can go ahead and write down our, our general solution. So the general solution to this ODE is going to be our Complementary solution, that's C1 plus C2x plus C3e to the negative x minus 1 tenth x cosine x plus 3 tenths x sine x. And that is our general solution. And I'm sorry, I don't know why I wrote x here. These were... Um, Ah, my apologies. It was an e to the x cosine x. This was an e to the x sine x. So this should be e to the x, e to the x. There we are.